Will this weekend's discussions do what we're facing in two weeks? And that is put the specter of a government shutdown behind us. And will it Will it really be the newly signed tax policy that gives an assist on that, or are we heading for fiscal disaster in two weeks and beyond? Maya McGinnis is the president of the Committee for a Responsible Budget. She's anticipating a deficit disaster. But former White House Budget Director Jim Miller says the tax plan will do what the president says it will, and that's ignite growth and draw down the deficit. Jim, look, I get the belief and hope that when people find more money in their paychecks with less of it going to the federal government, they'll spend more, they'll hire more. But Tax cuts are a funny thing. People sometimes save the money. What's behind your stance? Well, even if they say some, save some of it, they will spend some of it. The important thing is the economy will grow, increase the demand for labor, bring a lot of people who are unemployed right now back into the labor force. The economy will expand, and uh, people will be better off. Maya? I don't know. Uh, the deadline for Congress to get a budget is looming on the books. It's January 19th. How do you see the tax plan helping or hurting the process of getting that done? Right. Well, we are coming back to the start of January uh, in January of 2018 with a lot of things to get done. And I think the first point is, is the really critical one, which is how are those tax reforms going to affect the economy? And in the short term, where there may certainly be some stimulative growth, what I'm really worried about is we have an unsustainable fiscal path that this country is on. And I think pretty unquestionably, looking at every single model that evaluated those tax cuts, this will make that situation worse, not better. But what we have to face immediately with these spending priorities in January is my concern is we are now addicted to debt. We borrowed for the tax cuts, and now in January, you're going to hear all these spending priorities. We have to lift the budget caps. There's emergency spending. We want to spend more on X, Y, and Z, and nobody's going to want to pay for anything. So I think the real concern is, are we about to make this fiscal situation even worse? Jim, where is the pay go? Where are the spending cuts? Because we've heard very little, if anything, on that. Well, I think the president has a real a dilemma, because he promised he wouldn't do anything on... Uh, on the security. entitlement program, yeah, sure. but uh, but uh, he has to basically to keep spending uh, within bounds. Well, wait, hold on. I Does that mean? Are you saying that President Trump will face a Bush 41 situation of having to backtrack on read my lips, no new taxes when it comes to touching Social Security and cutting some of the entitlement there? I think they will find clever ways of saying they're not backing down, but they will have to make address some of the uh, entitlement uh, programs. But, but there's more here. Uh, Maya has a point of view, and his, her point of view is supported in, by some of the government modeling that's pretty static rather than dynamic. Robert Barrow in today's Wall Street Journal points out that you're likely to get about 1% increase in, in GDP, uh, maybe 1.1% increase in GDP over the next couple of years, and then some more uh, in subsequent years. Maya is right. Our presence or circumstances uh, before the tax cut is unsustainable. You're not going to do anything about the deficit under the old program. The new program has a chance of increasing revenues and, and, and reducing the deficit and reducing the debt. Maya, do you foresee two weeks from today that we're going to be sitting here looking at a government shutdown. They keep pushing it out. Don't worry. Nobody seems to worry. Um, Warren Buffett just penned a piece in Time magazine saying, don't worry, we have years of growth ahead of us in this country, but uh, these little stumbling blocks tend to grow pretty big if we don't do something about it. I don't think we're going to have a government shutdown, and we've certainly played with that uh, almost every time we face the choice, and we have shut the government down in recent years. But I think uh, it's in nobody's interest, no political parties, and certainly not the countries, uh, to shut down the government. What is in their interest is to tackle each one of these funding priorities. Both parties think that the spending caps are something they don't want to live with mm -hmm. in. But OK, if we're going to lift them, how do we want to offset those costs? What other spending are we willing to reduce? Um, I agree with the point that entitlements actually needed to be changed before this tax bill, and they still do in order to make them solvent. So well, the, the president had said he didn't want to. Uh, that is a political promise that really is untenable. We have to make those reforms, right. and we have to figure out ways to pay for things like emergency spending okay. that come every year without adding them to the national credit card. Well, I will say this. The, the psychological boost of the, the tax cuts, which are coming, but uh, not uh, before April 15th, certainly, Jim, um, have certainly had a salubrious effect, and, and that's, a, that's a hard fact. Listen to what Gary Cohn, the, uh, the big economic director at the White House, said this morning on Fox Business. 
In just two weeks, we've had well over 100 companies announce year-end bonuses, 401k contributions, or increase to minimum wages for about a million workers in the United States. So a million workers in the last week of 2017 got a surprise just because of the tax reform package. So Jim, can you definitively say that what Gary just talked about will translate to more tax revenues, which then draw down what Maya and many Americans are worried about, and that is this huge deficit? I'm very optimistic that will be the case, and let's not overlook the changes in the uh, capital gains rate and, and, the ca and the tax rate on capital on, on, on corporations. It's going to really boost the revenue to the federal government, especially early on, and I think that's going to make a difference. I agree with Maya that we have to be concerned about uh, not having a shutdown, and I agree with her we're not going to have a shutdown. I remember being in the Oval Office one time with President Reagan when there was the threat of a shutdown. I was walking back and forth because I was upset that Congress <laughs> wouldn't respond, and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Jim, Jim, let's just settle down. Let's close her down and see if anybody notices. <laughs> so they're not going to close right. down the government. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I know uh, government workers will notice. The world will notice. The markets may notice. But until then, let's hope you're both right. No government shutdown. Maya, Jim, thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you.